I love superlatives, and you do too, don't lie to me. Ever since we were all kids, we wanted to know what was the fastest, the best, the strongest, if my dad could beat your dad, whatever. So today, I'm going to be talking about one of the strongest melee weapons in the craziest Monster Hunter game. We're talking attacking during iframes, quad digit element values, and one single attack that did more damage than three true charged slashes. You guessed it, I'm Symmetry, and this was the Magnet Spike. Picture this. Monster Hunter Frontier had a big update coming. Zenith monsters had been out for a while and players were facing the strongest Raviente to date. Everyone was scratching their heads thinking how it could get even more overblown from here. Then the social channels posted this. Nothing more, nothing less. A tantalizing silhouette with promises of a new weapon type led the community into a big old guessing game. What possible weapon could look like this? Was it the long lost hunting boomerang from previous concept art? Well wait no longer. On July the 6th, 2018, a humble one hour dev stream revealed the name, Magnet Spikes. If we fast forward a month later to August 2018, fans were treated to a gameplay reveal stream, about a month before the release of the newest expansion on September 26th. It was known as Z Zenith or Double Z. As one would expect, the server crashed multiple times with the launch, with the floodgates opening to all kinds of hunters eager to try this new toy out. Now I personally used this weapon a lot during my time in Frontier. It was one of my three quote unquote main alongside switch axe and greatsword, so I had ample opportunity to learn the intricacies of this powerhouse inside and out. Firstly, it wasn't immediately available to you. Much like the Tonfas used to be, you had a quest line you needed to complete to unlock the mags, and this was centered around the mysterious new NPC known as Graham. It was said that Graham had returned to Mesoporta from a western land, bringing this new and unique weapon with him. As such, any hunter wanting to get their hands on such a piece of kit needed to hunt with the guy. The quest line to do so was threefold, against each of the magnetic monsters that Frontier had in its repertoire. First up were the brutal duo of Lolo and Ray Gorgaf. Next was the Electric electrifying Rebi Diora, and finally, a G-rank hardcore Ruko Diora. Best all that, and at the end, your polarizing boomerang became available. That final step for a newer player, such as myself, was brutal. Ruko's floating rocks and one-shot attack that ignored any and all defenses you had ran me around the block more times than I cared to admit. Okay, you go through all that, the quest line's done, the spikes have been forged. On to the real juiciness. How did it actually play? Well, the spikes had two modes, cutting and blunt, and can switch between either freely. We'll cover cutting mode first. Now, as a heavy weapon, you had a slow, powerful four-hit combo, performed either vertically or horizontally. The final hit was a massive overhead slam that dealt titanic damage and was the stationary combo of choice. Fairly simple so far. Next up, the weapon had guard points. Just by tapping the right trigger, you could go into an instant guard point with no knockback, and if an attack connected you during this time, you'd get a counterattack for your trouble for free. On top of that, you could straight up follow into the overhead slam attack I mentioned earlier for a combined motion value of about 230. Oh. And if that wasn't cracked out enough for you, cutting mode had what's known as EX evades. That is to say, dodges with huge amounts of iframes that were an attack in of itself. Any and all AoEs were a joke and you could just keep powering through without a care in the world. Speaking of EX evades, up here you can see the little red gauge, that is your EX gauge. You lose a bar by doing an evade and replenish it by doing damage. Good gameplay would end up with you replenishing your gauge completely passively and pretty much never running out. You can also see the icons for the two modes next to it, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Now we're going to flip onto the other side of the coin with the blunt mode. Blunt was more so based around countering aggressive attack patterns as the response to a successful guard point was an explosive counterattack, and a successful evasion boosted the follow up attack as well. Put simply, you wanted the monster to hit you just to throw it back into their face. However, the real big boy damage came from the triple hit combo. This combo ended in a charged attack, which if executed properly, came stacked with over 300 motion value and could be comboed into a straight up suplex attack for even more damage. Realistically between the two, both modes could be used with relative comfort on just about any monster. However, blunt mode is hilarious in that it all but rendered hammer obsolete out of very specific setups on Hunter's Road. Raviente parties would no longer use the hammer for KOs, the sheer power of the charge combo meant that no DPS was lost at all. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, when can you say that you've ever rendered an entire weapon class obsolete? It's just the right kind of ridiculousness I loved in this installment. So mechanically, that's how you fought with the thing, right? Heavy attacks, chance to stun, guard points, and so on. Now the real question is, what's magnetic about the magnet spikes? I'm very glad you asked. 
you came equipped with a magnetic sidearm in your pocket. No kidding, this was a handgun that just shot out magnetism. At the start of a hunt, you'd fire it off and mark a monster on any part of its body, kind of like a kinsec, and from that you gained absurd movement. When you were close to the monster, you could repel yourself away from the node at light speed, covering a vast distance, sometimes even an area-wide distance. And even better, when far away, you could attract yourself to the monster from pretty much the same distance, and end up with a follow-up slam. I mean, at this point, you should be getting how difficult it is to put into words how comical things could get when you get familiar with the mags. You could dash into battle, hit a few attacks, repel yourself away into the next country, fly back in, all while safe and sound under a mountain of frames. It was ludicrous, and it doesn't stop there. The crowning glory of using said magnetism is that not only after a while, you could supercharge your weapon for a 10% bonus, and it built up like a status. This status was insane. After a while, any monster not immune to it will be covered in a magnetic aura. Now once this happens, you perform a forward combo and it allows you to go into a magnetic pin. Yes, a pin. You heard me right. You'd freeze the monster in place with magnetism, perform a quick button mashing quick time event, and if you succeeded, you would go into a huge overhead slam with a massive magnetic orb. This stuff even worked on some Fatalis species. This dealt damage to whichever body part was marked by the magnetic node, meaning it was very good for sniping part breaks. How good? Oh, oh baby. For context, if we're talking about motion values, the most powerful single attack in Monster Hunter Rise is the Great Sword's True Charge Slash, which maxes out at 264 motion value. Now, I want you to pause the video here. Pause it and take a guess at the motion value of this attack. 300 maybe? Maybe 350 if you're feeling brave? Have a guess? Stop there, then press play. 600. 600 at its weakest. It can be increased to 750 motion value. 750. I mean, it's a miracle there's anything to carve off after you're done with the thing since you're just gonna be sweeping up nothing but dust after a hit like that. It's incredible and I love this weapon so much. In summary, Magnet spikes were decadence in Monster Hunter form. So over the top, so ridiculous and so, so powerful. They could trap, pump out damage like no one's business and shrug off hits as if they were just Jagras. It was a walking, fighting superlative, and I absolutely bloody loved them. God only knows what would have happened if it ever got hit with a nerf. And that's the Magnet Spikes. I hope you enjoyed this gushing look back at some Frontier craziness and would love to do more videos like this. Please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see, make sure to subscribe, and I'd be happy to give that kind of stuff a shot. Take it easy lads, I'll see you next time.